So for everybody, if you go into your into your groin, you feel this hard bone down there. Yes. Just behind it is the bladder. Right. So when when the bladder gets full with urine, it keeps swelling up. So you can feel this pouch touching up, yeah, touching there, yeah. and sometimes you feel the pressure and then the edge to go and, and void urine. So that is the position of the blood, bladder, and it basically collects urine, stores it for a while, and then when it's full, sensations are sent to your system from the brain everywhere that there's a need to void, and yeah. then you go and void. Um, people who have uh, painful bladder syndrome, they have a chronic inflammation of the uh, lining of the bladder. bladder inside of the bladder has a lining and there's a chronic inflammation as well as the muscles of the bladder bag itself they have this chronic inflammation which usually comes with the pain and this pain is on and off it can be very distressful and apart from the pain they have this thing about frequency of urinating right they also have this thing about um agency of urinating it's like when they have press for urine it's like if you don't go right now, you it's like burst. there's the battle of a magadan down there. Yeah, you, you, burst. you have the just just want to go out and leave. So supposing I have um, that kind of syndrome, this 30 minutes interview would be stressful for me. Okay, which it actually leads, leads on to the next question. I mean, because obviously with extreme pain, uh, the urgency of having to go to the toilet, the inconvenience of inconvenience. All of this, how, how can this affect somebody's life? It's, it's, it's <laughs> terrible because you can go through probably even one hour in a meeting without probably getting up to go and to. wee-wee. Wow. Um, for some people, they may have this agency to, to urinate almost every 10 minutes. I mean, we have people who may go through about going to 30, 60 times a day of passing urine, just wow. at short intervals. It's very inconveniencing and it can bring a lot of stress and other emotional problems to yeah. you because even at night, you have to wake up several times to go and urinate. Right. Yeah. And f- sometimes you might say that, oh, because the man is an elderly man, um, he has maybe a prostate, a prostate problem. So he has a prostate um, enlargement, so he's constricting his bladder outlet. Yeah. But the statistics show that women have more of the painful bladder syndrome than men. Okay. So it can make life very uncomfortable for the woman as well. So it's going to affect your sleep, it's going to affect your relationships, especially yes. yeah. because... Um, because of that inflammation, and you know, the bladder is just close to the um, the female sexual organ. Yeah. The vagina is just at yeah. the back, and the bladder is just so on it top. Will make sex uncomfortable. Exactly. So, for those who have that kind of condition, sex becomes painful. We call that dyspareunia. Mm-hmm. So, they will come and tell you that, oh, anytime I have sexual intercourse, I have so much pain. And um, the doctor will be looking elsewhere for, ah, why? Do you have a. Um, inflammation in the vagina, do you have fibroid, do you have any cerv- cervix problem? Sometimes when all these things are ruled out and it's not found to be either a cervix a problem of the cervix or bleeding problems or fibroid problems or any of these things, the, the, the cause might just be an irritable bladder or um, a painful bladder syndrome. Okay, now from some of the symptoms that you've mentioned, uh, it seems very similar to a urinary tract infection. Um, what's the difference between the two? Yes. Because obviously blood, bladder, urine, same. Exactly, and it, that, that's for the same reason that a lot of times it is misdiagnosed. Right. Okay. Because when I feel some discomfort or some burning sensation, mm-hmm. um, likelihood, the th- th- doctor would think probably having a urinary tract infection. If right. you're a woman, actually about sexual activity and all these things. Yeah. And then they will tell you that go and do a urine um, exam, routine urine analysis, or go and do a urine culture. Now, and the doctor, doctor gets disappointed when it comes out and the urine test is normal, the analysis is normal, the culture counts, no bacteria is captured in the urine. And yet you're having the classic symptoms of the of same the urinary tract infection. Right. It could just be that this person has what we call the painful bladder syndrome or interstitial cystitis. Yeah. So, um, in terms of the differences, this is the difference between the UTI. UTI may be able to show that if you do the urine test, you will see pus cells. You know, bacteria will release pus into, into your urine. urine. So, you see pus cells, epithelial cells, and sometimes protein in the urine, mm. which is not normal. So, if yes. you have protein in your urine, it means that there's a, an infection going on. And, and then, also, the culture may um, pick up a bacterium, maybe E. coli, some other kind yeah. of bacteria, Klebsiella, may be picked up. But if it's none of this, and the symptom is recurring, is recurring every now and then. You're having that discomfort. Then it's likely to be really an irritable bladder. bladder. Just like, yeah, sorry, an irritable bladder, yeah. or just like people have irritable bowel syndrome. Um, okay, now we, you, you already told us that it affects more women than it does men. Um, what is the age range? 
<coughs> just have some younger people, younger, older people? Yeah, um, <coughs> with painful bladder syndrome, interesting, it can affect any age. Okay. It can affect any age. And um, we said that it can affect men, it can affect women, it can affect even children. Right. But most commonly, it's usually diagnosed for people who are 30 years and above. Okay. Above the age of 30, you are likely to have some of these um, symptoms coming up. Children, sometimes it may not be picked up early. And uh, for men, um, usually the doctor will be thinking, ah, you're a man, so probably you have inflammation of your prostate. That's why you're urinating frequently. Or even sometimes when um, you come in and you talk, talk about the fact that you're having frequency of urination or you have hesitancy. Mm. Now, hesitancy is when you have the urge to urinate, you yeah, rush to the place, and then it's like, Standing stop. there for a while. Stand there for a while before the show will begin, you know. So that's hesitancy. So you have all these things. Sometimes the doctor may even tell, ask you, ah, do you have a history of diabetes? Is yeah. there diabetes in your family? Because you might th think that the frequency has got to be more sugar in your blood yeah. trying to um, try to excrete um, yeah. itself out. And, but it's not. So um, that is a way by which you say that the diagnosis sometimes is very tricky. So, so in men, um, obviously, they'll do the same uh, urine test. Um, and possibly even the prostate test That's because right. of the symptoms. That's right. Now, when they don't get the results for either prostate or um, you know cultures or bacteria within the urine, that it, it basically means that people who actually suffer from painful bladder syndrome have probably been misdiagnosed for other ailments. A lot of the t a lot of times, so because somebody comes to you and uh, they may talk of um, a lot of the signs. The the Usually, the doctors are about to want to pry into your history. Mm. So somebody comes and is keeps coming. I, I know this young man who who came the last time. He said he's been having this discomfort with the urination for a very long time. He goes to hospitals, giving antibiotics and giving antibiotics on and off and on and off. The last time I, I think I saw him last year, and asked him to go and do a particular test, what called retrograde urethrogram, mm -hmm. for me to check something else. And I realized that he hasn't done it. And he keeps coming, and he's been giving antibiotics. Tell you what, I saw him last week, and I told him, listen, we are, your problem is has, it's not to do with the antibiotics. The antibiotics obviously has not helped you. Yeah. So today I'm see, stopping you from taking the antibiotics. Go and do this further test. So I wrote yes, in his yeah. folder, um, until he shows Comes the results. The results. Let's, Let's stop giving him the antibiotics, because yeah. obviously it's not helping him. I will make it worse. And I tell him, he's making your case worse. Yeah. So period, go and do that test, come back, and then let's see the way forward, so that we at least we know that we are moving to one step, because if yeah. obviously the antibiotics do not help They're not in, working. in painful bladder syndrome. Wow. Okay, so how is it treated then? Um, the treatment is interesting. Um, first off, um, like somebody who has got this thing called irritable bowel syndrome, the first thing is for the doctor to explain to you that, listen, I've, I've, I've diagnosed you having irritable bowel. Understand your condition. And um, uh, maybe dieting, Diet. things that you're not supposed to eat. Because it's, it's, it's realized that for people who have the penchant for having this um, painful bladder syndrome, excessive consumption of things like caffeine, um, some tea, some alcoholic beverages, some sodas, etc., right. will make it the thing even worse. even worse. So for them, it's advised that you restrict consumption of high levels or high amounts of this thing. Yeah. It is known that some of these, what happens usually in the painful bladder syndrome is that the lining of the bladder maybe may have some injury. Some of these chemicals, when, when, when you take in caffeine, you realize that you smell it in your urine. Yeah. So it means that it goes to the bladder as well. The chemicals in it could, I'm not saying caffeine is like, don't take it at all, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that if you are predisposed to this painful bladder syndrome, yeah. then you need to be careful because it could damage the lining, the lining. of the... Of the um, not direct perforation because okay. you're talking about just the lining, the lining inside. before the muscle. Okay. So it may cause injury to the lining of the um, bladder and then when the lining is injured, then the chemicals in the urine, the potassium, all these things, will then seep under the lining, yeah. causing you inflammation, causing you pain. And, and some people have been known to have... Um, what we call mast cells, mast cells in the bladder. Mm -hmm. Mast cells are usually in the chest, mm -hmm. um, in the lungs, where as they produce histamine and then the asthma thing goes on. Yeah. And the mast, the same histamine, you know, can cause pain. So research has also shown that they may have a lot more of mast cells in there, yeah, and then that also causes the pain. Mm -hmm. And also, it's known that they may have more of nerve fibers getting to the to your bladder than those who don't have the painful bladder syndrome. Mm -hmm. So all these things working together 
if you put in the insult into the bladder, injury, yeah. then you are going to cause more problems. Okay. So in the treatment, therefore, we are told, educated on your, your, your condition, mm -hmm. you are told on certain restrictions, and sometimes they give you certain medications. Um, these medications, I wouldn't say is a cure for. Obviously, antibiotics are out of place yes, here. Yes, because of non-infection. Um, yes. yeah. So they, there, there are certain types of drugs like imitriptyline and those ones that they can handle pain. You realize that somebody gets headache problems and they would say that apart from all the pain you say go and see a psychiatrist. Mm. Maybe sometimes they might put you on something like a mistriptyl or triptyzol. Right. That has a pain um you also be able to deal with pain and also it it has a side effect that helps reduce the frequency of urination. Of urination. So all these okay. things go in tandem in terms of managing such a patient. Mm. So for anybody with painful bladder syndrome it is a chronic management, like right. somebody who is asthmatic. Yep. You are told it's just something that you want to live with. Exactly. You have to accept just it. have to accept it. And then, and then tailor your lifestyle. If you know yeah. this, your work schedule, you know how to manage yourself, and then um, do what you got to do. Okay. Um, what other what other issues can trigger um, um, irritable bladder? Uh, sorry, irritable bladder. Painful bladder. Painful bladder. Yeah. Um. There. There are other associations that can be. Um, looked at. First off, I mean, if you look at the way this is, and as I, I just used the irritable bowel syndrome, yes. it means that they have a similar, similar. kind of characteristics. Right. So we, we, we've realized that people with uh, painful bladder or interstitial cystitis have possibly have other conditions like um, irritable bowel syndrome. And okay. um, they have what we call the chronic pelvic pain. Right. They may have chronic pel pelvic pain issues. Um, they may have something else we call celiac disease, but not for here now. And then they also have uh, other things like lupus. It's also a possibility. Lupus, right, yeah. Systemic lupus erythematosus. Um, many, many other associations that we can have um, to do with um, uh, painful bladder syndrome. What would be the, uh, what would be the case if hypothetically, um, there have been misdiagnoses, um, we haven't got to the root of the problem and find out that it's painful bladder syndrome, and it gets to the extreme case. <clears throat> extreme cases, um, it's very distressful because the pain can resemble that of, as though it's an end-stage kidney disease. Wow. It can <laughs> mimic the pain of a cancer, the cancer pain, it can get that bad if um, intervention is not, or it's not diagnosed early enough for you to yeah. be put on the regular okay. management, things that you need to do when you have the pain, do this and yeah. do that. The pain can be that severe. Um, it's gotten to the point where uh, statistically, um, people have gotten to a point of contemplating suicide because of the pain of this bladder syndrome. Wow. So it can get that. So then it, it effectively, it can go on to lead to psychological issues. Psychological issues. Depression. Depression and then um, depression, stress. Yeah. It gets raised. You, get, you wake up and get to, the, uh, to your work site and you're already sleepy because you've not had a good sleep. And yeah. again, it's put a lot of relationships into problems because yeah. um, the emotional aspect of relationship, your partner doesn't understand you, doesn't understand the complaint. Anytime we have any um, meeting, like sexual intercourse, you're always complaining. So yeah. there's the guilt on the person that I'm not satisfying my partner and the partner too doesn't understand. And before long, relationships go haywire and they go basic and that kind of thing happens. So it's a whole psychological thing that um, at a point you're even asked to speak to a clinical psychologist to, to help you manage it through. Yeah. All right, so just to wrap things up, uh, anybody who may have any of those painful situations around their area, what would you advise them to have done uh, yeah. when they go to the doctor? So because obviously if, if there's a lot of misdiagnosis involved in this. That's right. If you're having chronic pain lower down there, you're having um, pain during sexual intercourse, you're having frequency, and you're not an old man. You're not an old man, you're having frequency of urination, you're having agency, the age to urinate is there, and it's like you have to leave what you are doing to go yeah. and urinate. And you've done urine tests, and all these things are consistently, they are showing nothing. Mm. Chances are that you may be having a painful bladder syndrome, interstitial cystitis, and then you need to. Um, Sometimes you can even prompt your doctor about it. Hmm. Because so that they can know yeah. exactly what check to do. Yeah, mean, right? I mean, I've done this, I've done that, and still nothing showing. I mean, yeah. I've read about this thing called painful bladder syndrome. But, uh, 
It doesn't hurt to ask. No, no, no. I, I don't have a problem. Yeah. I don't have if a patient suggests something to me. No. Okay. I want to say a big thank you once again, Dr. Boti, for coming in. And also, once again, happy birthday. Thank you. And a uh, big thank you to Lipton Tea, Inspiration Flowing from Nature, for being the sponsors of this particular segment as well.